Hey guys, Rye123 here today with another Roblox tutorial for you all. And today we are going to be working on context action services. And basic, if you're like me, when I got this suggestion, I was like, what the crap's that? But basically, they're just the little buttons that pop up in the mobile app that help the mobile users to play your game. Um, because sometimes they are unable, like if it a game has you push a button on a keyboard to do something obviously mobile users aren't able to do that even if they do have something like a Bluetooth keyboard so it's nice to have those little pop-up buttons to um, help them out and if you don't know what I'm talking about let's go ahead and jump into the studio and I'll show you what I mean da -da 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 -da, playing Minecraft on my new iPad that I got for Christmas oh check it out buttons to help me out. I can turn this block green and blue. That's awesome. I better give this game a thumbs up. Okay guys, so that was basically what we're going to be doing for this tutorial. Um, if you notice my screen size is a little different, that's because I'm emulating the size of uh, and resolution of an iPad 2. Um, just to help us out with the mobile version and just so you know you guys can do this right from the studio you do not need a mobile de a mobile device to test these but if you have an Apple device you can um, test them on your mobile just by pairing them um, I do not have an Apple device available to me so I am testing I will be testing on the computer um, so anyways let's get started with the tutorial the first thing you're gonna need to know is that since the context action whatever I forget what it's called it's a hard thing to remember since it's a client side thing um, it will the script for it isn't just gonna be a normal script we chuck in workspace it's gonna have to be a local script inside the player that runs on the client and so what you're gonna wanna do is come over here to screen GUI and you are going to want to insert a local script which looks like sorry which looks like da, 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 EF I know my alphabet there it is local script it has like a little guy in the picture then you're gonna open it up and oh man I'm not gonna be able to fit this whole script in here oh well this is the win this is the script that we are going to be using yeah I'm gonna have to keep it at one this is the script we're gonna be using um don't worry I'll explain every step I know it looks long and intimidating but we can do it so let's just jump right in and get started so first of all obviously this top one is of course where we just store our player in a variable um, and then we're going to want to set ourselves up a context action service. So this is just storing this service into a variable that we can use later so that we don't have to say game get service that every time we want to do something. Um, ignore these two functions for now and we're going to want to come down here to these two functions. So the first thing the way I'm going to be doing this tutorial is you touch a block and two buttons appear. Now, there are other ways to do this. Um, like you can have it set so that when a player gets in the general vicinity of a block, when the player, I don't know, does something, then they get the buttons. But this basically is just, I'm just going to keep it simple for everyone and it's just going to be when you touch the block the buttons show up. So you're going to need two um, event handler things. The first one is, so I have a block in workspace, that one that you saw earlier, it's just called touch me. So I go game.workspace.touchme.touch semicolon connect touched color pad and that will call this functions whenever it is touched. The second one is one that we haven't used before and it's called touch ended and that means that when the part is done touching the block um, it will call this event here or this function sorry. So let's go ahead and look at the touch function first. So basically what this does is sorry these print things are for me I was trying to test this 
Um, so you're going to want to set up a thing called player near. So that way we know if a player is near and only one player can see the buttons. No, that's not true. Never mind. Um, so we're just going to want to know if the player is near the thing that we're going to be doing this with. So we just need a false variable. Then inside of the function, um, you're going to say if part.parent equals player.character then. So that's just saying if the part's parent is the character, like your guy, if it's your guy, um, then if player is near is equal to false, then it's going to set up all the buttons. So this first one, what it's going to do is set us up a button. Um, context action service semicolon bind action to input types. It's a function, so we're going to have to put it in parentheses. And each of these parameters are something different, which I will now go through. This first one, change button, or change blue, is the name of our context action. So anytime I want to call this back, I will have to say change blue because that is the name of the button. Now please bear in mind that that is not the text that will appear on the button. As of right now the button will be blank. Um, we'll get to that in a second though. This next one is change blue. This is the function you want to call when the button is pressed. And as you can see up here I have a function called change blue. So you're going to want to set up a function that when the button is pressed that's what will happen um, is and then this mean this right here means that the button will show up on the normal devices on the mobile devices if this is false the button will not show up on the mobile devices and then this last one is B um, this is what you want the action to be bound to on the computer so I could do the same thing I just did on the mobile device go stand on the blog and I could push B or G and it would change colors just as if I were to push the mobile buttons. Now this next line is context action service semicolon set title. This is what sets the um, text on the button. So as you can see I'm calling back up the change blue context action service and I'm name and I'm putting the title on the button turn blue. And then these next two lines I'm just doing the exact same thing. So let me get them yeah so you can see that this last line um, I found that when you are um, messing or have more than one button on the screen at a time it looks kinda messy like they're kinda overlapping the second button overlaps the jump button and it just doesn't look good so this last line is setting the position of the second button so that it looks a little nicer. So this context action service semicolon set position, what this method uh, or function does is it sets the position of the button we want. So change green is referring back to this one we made up here that changes the block green due to the change green method up here. Um, Da, 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 comma context so this is the button we want and then all this is the new position we want it so what I'm doing here is I'm taking the other buttons the change that's not right yeah whatever it works well it works we'll just leave it like that so what I'm doing is getting the position of the button already where it is already and I'm just adding um, 40 pixels on top of it so it will go up 40 pixels because for some reason Roblox's axis start from up in this left corner and positive is down and right and negative is up so I'm moving it up plus negative 40 I guess you could just subtract 40, but I like to add over subtraction when I do math. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys understand this. We're getting the green button right here. This is the button we want to change. And then after the comma, we're getting the green button again. It's position, and we're adding um, 40. Um, we've never used these UDMI2s before. 
This is basically just kind of like the GUI positioning feature in Roblox. So um, this first number is the um, scale, I think they call No, it's the offset. No, it's the scale. The scale will be like a decimal. So like if you wanted it to be like point some like one, three fourths of the screen away it would be 0.75 and one being a hundred percent of the screen this is to deal with different monitor and um, monitor resolutions the second number where we have the negative 40 is just straight up offset pixels so that you can manually enter the pixels um, then you're just gonna type n then you're gonna set the player near value to true and end um, <clears throat> Sorry, my throat's kind of dying. This is a exp explanat. This is a tutorial that needs a lot of explanation. So that it's that that sets up the button, sets the position, calls these methods that will um, change the bricks color, and then finally for our last function is stepped off. I don't think I spelled stepped right. It doesn't have two P's. Oh, well. Stepped off color pad. Um, and this is for, obviously, when the player steps off the color pad. So, again, we're checking to see if the part's parent is the player's character. Um, and then if the player is near, this is why we need that player near thing. Then it will unbind all the buttons. Um Depending on how many actions you have on the screen at a time, you might or might not want to use this because this will get rid of all the buttons. You can get rid of individual buttons by going like this. Um, context, action, service, semicolon, um, unbind, action, and then just like change green. And that will just get rid of the change green button. But because I'm only using those two at this time, I'm just going to use this to get rid of all of them and just clean up my code. Um, and then you set the player near back to false after the if statement and then just end your script. So um, I'm going to cut to a bigger screen size so that we can get this full script in here because the square isn't really working out for this. So this is the entire script. I hope that you can see it fine with my resolution. Someone said that my video look laggy. That's because I am recording on 1080p um, so that you can see them. They don't upload to YouTube on 1080, but I'm recording them in 1080. So that's why they're laggy, because I'm recording on a higher resolution than I normally would if I was just playing the game. Um, just so you guys can see all these little words and stuff, but I know this is a complicated script, but if you just kind of, I would recommend this being for a more advanced scripter, but if you can follow this along, that's great, um, and use it to your own, what you want to do. So, there was just one more thing I wanted to say, if you need this still, you can pause the video, but up here... You can name this whatever you want. I was just going off of what the wiki called it because that's kind of, like I said, I'd never heard of this thing before. So I was just using the wiki. But you could just say, change this to like CAS to shorten it because that's a really long thing to type out every time. But this in here does have to stay the same. So you can change this. Don't change this, just like with any other variable. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and jump back to the testing thing like we normally do at the end of each video. Hey guys, so here we are back in the studio, back to my iPad 2 resolution, um, or screen size. Anyways, gosh, my phone's buzzing like a banshee over here. Anyways, um, I... I'm going to show you guys how to set up an emulation so that you can test like this. It's really simple. So normally your ribbon up here looks like this. Click over on test um, right here. And then you're going to, you can either pair your test device, enter this code on your screen. But as of right now, I think that only works for Apple. Um, or you can come over here to emulation and choose your device. I'm on iPad 2. 
you need a server and then you can just hit start then once this loads up you'll get your server in the first window and then you will get a third window with your player just like every other time we use servers sorry let me recenter this and there we go so as you can see you have all the on-screen controls like you would if you were um, doing a um, on the mobile device um, hey guys I was watching the video um, af back afterwards and I realized that I forgot to mention that um, pressing the binded keyboard keys will also work to perform the desired action so you could have like a little hint or something telling the player that they can push G or B to change the colors or whatever you're trying to do um, yeah, sorry I forgot to mention that, but look, I am put my mic next to the keyboard so you can hear I'm pushing the keys and it's working, see? So yeah, that's, um, I just wanted to make a note of that, so there you go. Um, the keyboard keys work too. It's not just the mobile users that get all the cool stuff. Um, but yeah, here's back to the original footage. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. There's only... There's a few more things you can do with these buttons, like you can put pictures instead of words. I just put words because I didn't want to upload the pictures and use them and everything because I'm lazy like that. Whoa. So, um, but anyways, that's it for this tutorial, guys. I hope you enjoyed and found it useful. I know this one's a little bit more difficult than the ones we usually have. So please, please, please include the output if you have a problem. And if there is no output, you might be looking in the wrong place. Like for this one, since we're using a local script, the output for this script would be in the player, the player place one's output. But if you're using like a workspace script, it would be in the server output. So just make sure that you're looking in the right place before you decide that there is no output because I need to see the output or else it's going to be really hard to help you. Um, anyways, guys, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Sorry it's a little more lengthy than usual, but it is a little more complicated. Um, I, I really enjoyed making this one. I'm going to look into this a little bit further, see if there's some tricks I can figure out and share with you guys to help make your place more mobile friendly um, and if you like I said if you have a problem post a comment down below and I'd love to help you if you include the output so that I can help you and lastly don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed it really helps this video to be seen um, and that's pretty much it for this one guys so I'll see you tomorrow maybe it's Saturday kinda of hard to record on Saturday but I'll try to see you tomorrow if not see you when I get back um, anyways guys see ya